It's so good to be with you and such a privilege for us to be together in my home, in your home. Wow, modern technology, but even more than that, the precious ministry of the Holy Spirit with you and me. This is so exciting. And today we begin a new series called Connected. This is part one of Connected. Look, just for a second, I just want to... I just want to digress and talk about something here for a second. You know, I know that there is great pressure right now on our communities, in our homes, among our family and our friends. There's a lot of um, social pressure. There's a lot of just global pressure. It's a trial. Make no mistake about this. This is kind of what Revelation talks about, tribulation. This is a trial and a tribulation. But as you know, this will pass, and pretty soon we're all going to come together. We're all going to get together, the family of God, and we're going to enjoy each other's company. It's going to be so good. But in this time, this season, I just want you to understand something. I'm not a, an expert on what to put on your hands, what to put on your face, but I am a student of God's Word and what to put in your heart. And that's what I really want to talk to you about right now, because that's so essential, not to the next just seven days of your life, but the next seven years, the next 70 years, the next 7,000 years of your life. And I want to talk about that with you right now. But in this season of high pressure, don't let this season go by without understanding this one thing. You still have... God has given you the power and the dominion and the authority of choice. You have choices that you can make right now, even in your heart, where to set your mind and set your belief system. And you know what? In great pressure times, that's when diamonds can come out of the earth. Diamonds are made under great pressure. Yes, under great pressure, things break. But my friend, I know you. You're a student of God's Word. You're pursuing the truth. And the truth under great pressure just becomes more and more of a diamond in your life. So I just want to encourage you with that. Now, as we get into this series called Connected, today, in this session, I want to focus on connected, is directed, is protected. You can say that right there at home. Connected is being directed, is being protected when you're in God's plan of connection. You know, there's an old saying in the professional world that you've got to be connected, right? You know, you got to know the right people. It's not about, they say, it's not so much what you know as it is who you know. And the truth is, that is really, even in the spiritual sense, very true. Because, you know, you can't get to heaven based on what you know, on your good works and on your performance. We can only get to heaven if we know the right person. And that's Jesus, the Christ. We can only have eternal life through and knowing Jesus. So it really is true in a lot of ways. It's based on who you know. Life is really based on who you know. And who you know determines a lot of what you know as you spend time with that person. There is a cultural trend right now in our society toward autonomy. Be your own person. Do what you want. Express your freedoms. But the funny thing is about anarchy is it's being proposed as new thinking, and it really is just old sin. It's just we've already been there, done that. It's just old rebellion with new skin on it, with new pair of blue jeans. But it's the same old thing. It's thousands of years old, and it always fails. So whether it's failing today or whether it failed 2,000 years ago, it doesn't work. You and I were designed, we were made to be not independent, but dependent. We need a power source. Just much like this light bulb here, you and I, we were made for connection. Good, orderly, healthy, proper power connection. Good power. Good power will light this light bulb up. You and I know that. You were made on purpose for a purpose. And the creator who made you is the only one that can give you the source of power that you need to light up your design. Your design's phenomenal. If I were to compare your design to this light bulb, I would start in the trillions. You are worth trillions beyond this light bulb. But you and I know as we even look at this thing, inherently in its design is a need for power. It needs to be connected, right? I remember one time I was helping my brother. He had got a new house. Well, it was new to him and his wife. And in the basement, the previous homeowner had done some wiring. And um, 
probably shouldn't have done that. Probably wasn't the best person to be doing that home wiring. And so I know a little bit about electricity. So my brother asked me, he said, hey, would you help me fix? Because he said, switches are going on and nothing's happening. Sometimes things are happening that shouldn't be happening. So I said, sure. So we, we'd kind of looked at some of the lights in the basement in his rec room. And um, I'd turned them on and I went to the fuse box, the power source, and flipped off the right fuses that I thought would keep me protected. And I got up on a ladder and was, you know, approaching the box to try to fix some things on the inside when what I didn't know, and I probably, maybe you don't know, you're not supposed to run two separate circuits into the same box. And this homeowner, bless his heart, I know he meant well, but um, I had turned off one power source, but the other was still active and I kind of reached my hand in there and grabbed the live wire and if that thing didn't throw me off the ladder and across the room and wow it was a wake-up call to be sure but to all that to say that there is power but there's also power that is uh, improperly placed in our life and can cause destruction right it can hurt us so I'm talking about the good kind of power you want to be hooked up to the good kind of power I don't want to see you thrown across the room anymore when, you got, when you're hooked up to the right power source, it chases away the lonely, the sad, the depressed, the messed up. The right power lights your design. God wants you connected in a wonderful way, in a good way, in a life-giving way. He doesn't want to throw you across the room. So what's in this for you? That's what you should be asking. As we get into this series called Connected, you should be asking yourself, what's in this for you? Well, Stephen, is that all right to ask? Should I be asking God, you know, what's in it for me? Yes, God's not having an identity crisis because you're asking him. Look, God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that you might have life or that you might have light. God wants to light up your design. So he wants you asking him the right questions. If you're struggling right now with loneliness, depression. Maybe you feel like this is you and you're just, your light's not on. You just feel like you're in the dark. Maybe you're struggling with fear. Maybe you're feeling isolated, unmotivated, just discouraged. I'm telling you right now, God wants to light up your life. Yes, even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of bad news, God wants to bring you his good news to, to light you up. You were designed to be powered by God's love. Isn't that good? So in this Connected series, based on God's word, here is what it's going to do for you. Here's what I really believe with all my heart God wants to do for you. Number one, God's going to address the powerlessness that you feel. If you feel powerless, that's not God's will. Number two, God's going to give you real answers, not religious answers. God's not a religious God. He's a relationship God. God is the king of the universe. He's a relationship God. He doesn't need religion. When Jesus came, you know who gave him the most problem on earth? The religious people. God wants to power you up with real answers, real answers that just won't last for a day but, and break down over time, but that will last in eternity. Number three, it's going to increase your joy and your happiness quotient. Isn't that good news? God wants to increase your joy and happiness even in the midst of crisis. Yes, you know, it was Jesus preaching on the, the, the Sermon on the Mount when he said in Matthew 5, I think it's verse 4, he said, Blessed are those who mourn, those who have a reason to grieve and sorrow. He said, Blessed are you because he said, you're going to be comforted. You know what that means? That means you're going to be powered up, you're going to be lit up, and you're going to experience joy and happiness in place of your sorrow and your sadness. Number four. I really believe this message on connected, it's going to cut the head off of lonely in your life. You know what? We make really bad choices when we're lonely. I've made some really stupid choices in my life when I was lonely. Lonely is not a good place to make choices from. That's why it's so important that you're powered up that your design is lit up. And number five, it's gonna give you both spiritual and practical steps on living connected. Because when you live connected, then you live directed. And when you're directed, ah, oh, my friend, you experience protection. Connected, directed, 
and yes, protected. Some of us have the illusion of being connected and therefore having power. There was this little seven-year-old girl and she said this. She said, you know what? I appreciate my teachers for teaching me words that help me argue with my parents. <laughs> That's not the kind of connected that I'm talking about. That's not the kind of power that I'm talking about. Power to argue with people. I'm talking about power to really live life. Let up, right? So connection means power. We know that this light bulb, it's designed to be lit up, but it needs power. You were designed to be connected so that you'll have power, so that you'll be lit. You know, the world pursues power, but it's a fake version. It's a tragic, self-destructive version of power. God has the genuine thing, the genuine source, the real power that lights up your design. Let's turn to God's word because God's word is light. Here we go in Ephesians 5 verses 8 and 9. For once you were darkness. Notice it doesn't say you were in darkness, although that's true. It says for once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Lead the lives of those native born to the light for the fruit, the effect, the product. I, I love that. You know, God is very outcome minded. He says for the fruit, the effect, the product of the light consists in every form of kindly goodness, uprightness of heart and trueness of life. Oh, doesn't that sound good? You see, there are aspects of power that you don't see, but you see the effects of. Just like, you know, in this house, there's wiring all through the walls. I don't see it. You know, and even if I could see the wires, I really don't see the power. I just see the wiring. But the wiring is hidden in the walls. I don't see it, but I see and I recognize the outcome of the power. In fact, if um, there was one time when we were vacuuming or something, we had maybe too many lights on, too many things on a circuit, and the, the circuit blew, the, the fuse blew, I recognize right away when the power is not available. I mean, I can recognize and see, hey, wait a second, I'm plugged in, but the power is not available. You've recognized that. You've seen that. A good name. I mean, you can't see a good name, but a good name, when someone has an influential name, you maybe don't see the name, but a good name has great power. Good names can open doors for you. Good names have influence. Good names have a great credit rating. Good names, they, they mean something to people. They, they have influence. They have power to them. The name of Jesus is above every name. It's got power the name of Jesus. You know, Moses, he asked to see God's glory, which is like saying, God, I want to see the essence of who you are. I want to see your light, what lights you up. And God said, Moses, you're kind of under the old covenant, so I can't show you the full weight of my, notice this, my name and my goodness. So I'll hide you in the cleft of this rock and make my goodness and name go by. And then you can look at after, I'll remove my hand and you can look at the residue. And the Bible says that Moses just looked at the exhaust fumes of God's goodness and name and he was glowing for weeks, so much so that the people said, you need to put a veil on your face. It's scary that you're glowing like that. You see, Adam and Eve in the garden, they were naked, and the Bible says that they were not ashamed. They were covered with glory and light. Light, they were glowing. They didn't need clothes because they were glowing. The moment they sinned, suddenly the light went out in their life. They were in darkness. They weren't just in darkness. They were darkness and they perceived it. And the Bible says instantly they were ashamed. You know what? When your design is not lit, it's so easy for shame. Like our grandparents, Adam and Eve, it's so easy for shame to come in. So easy to become magnetized to loneliness, desperation, hurt, sorrow. So easy. There's nothing wrong with your design, my friend. You're made in the image of God. God loves you. It's your connection. It's your connection. You're not connected. So look, let me just walk you through this. This is so simple. Like this light bulb is not connected. It's, in, it's understandable why it's not lit up. You're like, well, I understand it. it's not connected. That makes sense to me. Why doesn't it make sense to you why you're not lit up with joy, with peace? Doesn't it make sense that if you're in darkness, you're going to feel sad and depressed? Like you, this bulb was created. Somebody created it. It was made on purpose for a purpose. 
you, even though your design is trillions upon trillions of times better, more lavish than this, you're still made on purpose for a purpose. And you and I, we know something intrinsically. We know that this thing was made for light. My friend, you were made for light. Even the enemy, the devil knows you were made for light. That's why he hates you. He's jealous of you. He wanted to be a son of light. You got the position. You're called to that. That's why he's waged an eternal lifetime of his to be against you. He hates you. So maybe, you know, with this light bulb right here, you know, like, let's just try this evolution thing. Maybe if I just set this light bulb right here, you know, we just give it a chance, it'll evolve into having light. Like, let's just give it a few seconds. I have to be honest with you. I, I let this thing sit here overnight. And when I came down, it was unplugged and it still didn't light on its own. My friend, you're never going to evolve into being lit doesn't work. You need the creator to power you up again. You need him to power you up. Okay, so if it's not evolution, well then maybe maybe we just need to have, take the responsibility and light ourselves. You know, if I can just get enough love and acceptance, you know, if I can get enough people liking me, maybe on Facebook, right? If I can get, if this little guy can get enough likes on Facebook, maybe he's going to light up. What do you think? Maybe if we can get him enough likes, at some point, he's just, the light's just going to come up on the inside and he's going to be lit and there's going to be a happiness. And you and I know it doesn't matter how many likes you get in Instagram, TikTok, or whatever social media platform, you will not light up your light bulb no matter how many followers you got. You see, we know it, but yet do we know it? Do we understand this, that you need a power source from outside coming on into the inside? Okay, well, listen, maybe I just need to light, get some light producing activities going on around me. Maybe I just need to get an education, get some light coming on in the inside. Look at that. So we just put some light. Maybe if I just prime the pump. My grandmother used to talk about, you know, when we go down the East Coast, she said, you know, if we can just get some water, we can get more water. So maybe if we prime the pump, maybe if I prime the light with this, there we go. So got some light coming in on the inside of the light. The moment I take it away, though, it's still in the dark. I can't light it with an education. I can't light it from the outside in. I, I, can't, I can't somehow accentuate its curves. You know what I mean? Like you look at this little precious um, light bulb and it's like it's got a nice little curve too, but maybe I'm getting critical of the curve. Maybe if I could make it just stretch it out the glass a little taller, maybe if it was a little wider and stronger, you know, maybe if I could change the shape of this light bulb that somehow it would be accepted. Come on, you know that's foolishness. You know it'll never work. You can't physically make this light bulb a better shape and somehow light it up. It's not going to work. My friend, this light bulb is not going to light up even if it gets more religion. If this light bulb prays more, it's not going to light up. It needs a power source. You know, we got a whole world right now that's praying. But if you aren't hooked up to the power source, no outcome. I want outcome. Don't you want outcome? You've prayed before and been, I've been there. I've been lonely and prayed, get up off my knees and still been lonely because you got to hook up to the power source. I feel so empty. This little light bulb, if he could talk right now, I bet you that's what he'd say. I bet you'd say, Pastor Stephen, I feel so empty. I feel so discouraged. Maybe if I would just cease to be the pain would go away. You know what, my friend? I've been there too. I thought about just ending my design. I'm so lonely. I feel so disconnected. What's the point? If I can't get connected, maybe I should just end it. I've been there too. But it's not what God has for you. God loves you. God so loved you that he gave the ultimate connector, the connection to put the power in your design. This light is meant to come from the inside out, not from the outside in, but you've got to be connected. Watch how quickly this whole discussion seems to be resolved. The moment you're connected, the moment you get to shine from the inside out, not from the outside in. 
Jesus is the connector by faith to the power source of life. Come on with me. Come on. Let's just, we're going to get this thing connected. You know, a little bit of humility goes a long way if you'll just submit. Now, this light bulb is giving up its autonomy. It just can't be anywhere. It's got to be connected. And the moment that light bulb is connected and the power source, you see, you can't see the power. All you see is my faith. This is my faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So faith, it doesn't look great, but it's just a wire. It's, it's the transporter of the power. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. My trust, my faith, my belief in God. And then this doesn't look very attractive, but the cross doesn't look attractive. Jesus made the connector available to you and me through by faith, at the cross, his cross, suffering and paying the price. And instantly we get the power. The moment we hook up by faith through Jesus, we get the power source. And there's our design lit up. Isn't that beautiful? Look at you all lit up and glowing. Look at you. But my friend, the moment you disconnect from the source, you're in darkness. The moment by faith, it's by faith. God is love. See, there's love coming through this wire. You can't see it. There's power coming through this wire. You can't see it. The wire, it's not that it's all about the wire, but the wire is just, it says that it's through faith that it might be by grace. See, Jesus did the work at the cross. We get the connection. Let there be light. Look at this. Ephesians 1, 17 to 20. Read this with me right there in your home. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, meaning glory, we talked about that, it's like light. It's the power source. The Father of all power, glory, light may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. What do we talk about? It's about who you know in the knowing of Jesus. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what rich, how rich is His glorious inheritance in the saints. And so that you can, there we go again, know what is the exceeding and unlimited greatness of His power power in his power in and for us who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places look my friend God isn't giving you kind of like a second class power a second class love the Bible says in John 17 23 Jesus was talking and he said father I want them to know that you love them with the same love that you love me Jesus was saying that Listen, God loves you with the same power that he used to raise Jesus, his only begotten son, up from the grave. He's not using some watered down, second class, second tier power for you. You're getting family power, family love. You're getting God's best through Jesus. But my friend, I can't stress this enough. It's about connection. You've got to be connected. You see, in life, we get into performance, trying to do, 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 trying to do the right thing, trying to be the right thing. But it's about who you know. You've got to. How many times did we read that in Ephesians 1? You've got to have the knowledge of Jesus. You've got to know him. You've got to know the hope of his calling so that you can know what is the exceeding unlimited greatness of his power in you in and for you. God wants his power, not just around you, not just with you, but in you. Oh man, that should excite you. You don't get some lesser power. Look, my friend, if you don't know, you will not glow. And to the extent you know, that is the extent that you will glow. Hosea 4, 6, I often think of this verse where God says, my people, my design, perishes or is in the dark because of what they don't know. It's what you don't know that's keeping you in the dark. John 7, verse 38, Jesus said this, He who believes in me, as Scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. 
Listen to this. Life flows from the inside out, not from the outside in. That's why no matter how much affirmation you get, that's why no matter how many social media likes you get, no matter how published you are from the outside in, no matter how many people say you're great, no matter how many trophies you get, no matter how many rings and how much jewelry, no matter how beautiful you think you look on the outside, if you're not lit, you're in the dark. And that's why you're struggling. You keep asking yourself, why am I so depressed? Why am I so sad? I've got this and I've got that, or I don't have this and I don't have that. Look, all that stuff, all that, all those peripherals will not change the truth about your design. You need to be powered from the inside out. Life moves from the inside out. God comes into your heart. That's the plug-in. The light comes from the inside out. God produces life through the womb of your heart. James 1 verse 17 says this, Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. Woo! That's our God. He is the father of lights. That means he's the beginning of that power source. And you were made in his image. You were made to be lit, to have the life of God on the inside lighting you up. Bottom line is your health can't light you up. Your money can't light you up. Your goodness, your performance, your popularity will never, ever, ever light you up. The world's natural outside supply can't light you. Only God, the Father of lights, of all power and authority, can, by your connection through Jesus Christ, light you up. No Jesus, no illumination. Without Jesus, There can be no light. There can be no life. Well, Stephen, my light is out. Therefore, it must be God's will for my life. What a crazy way of thinking. Isn't it amazing how the enemy can seduce us into somehow thinking that his destruction is God's will for your life? His darkness, his deception is God's will for your life. That's why he's counting on you staying deceived in a way from this truth. This is a dangerous mode of thought for believers. Notice I use quotation marks because the deception is I'm a believer, but I'm believing the circumstances more than I am believing God. My light is out, therefore it must be God's will that my light is out. You're believing the circumstances instead of believing God's truth. Who are you going to believe? The light that's sitting there in the dark, or you're going to believe the manufacturer's standard for the light. And if there's no pursuit of being connected through faith in Christ Jesus, there can be no light. Stop making designer doctrines out of your circumstances. Let me say it again. Stop making designer doctrines out of your circumstances, your experiences. Stop picking and choosing the facts in your life to invent a doctrine. Facts change. Truth is principle. It's forever. Truth with a capital T remains forever. It's eternal. There are experiences today that people make sub-doctrines out of that are circumstantial and based on facts. Number one, you may have a car, but that doesn't mean that it's not God's will for you to have a car. You may not have a job today, but that doesn't conclude that it's God's will. You may have fallen off your bicycle. That does not mean God made it happen. I know for some of you, this is revolutionary, right? You may be in a very painful marriage, but that doesn't mean God put you there. Quit blaming God for all the wrong things in life. Jesus said this in John 10, 10. He said, the thief has come to steal, kill, and destroy. But he said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. We blame God because it's too painful. Often it's too painful. And I'm speaking from experience. We blame God because often it's too painful to take responsibility for the light being out in our life and sitting in the dark. I know that feeling. I've been in the ministry and struggling with such depression that I had suicidal thoughts. I know what that's like. Society teaches us to blame everyone and everything, but the bottom line is you're still not lit. I'm coming back to the outcome because I'm outcome orientated because I want you to get the results. I want you to get connected. You're in a crowd, but you're still lonely. 
You blame everyone and you still feel empty. You live promiscuous, but you still don't feel connected. Still lonely. You get in shape and you still feel like you're not accepted. You eat everything you can find. You take all the prescriptions and you still are empty. There's no substitute for God's power in your life. There's no substitute for God's love and there's no other way to connect but by faith in Jesus Christ. Look how easy this design is to get lit. What was dark is now light. Look how easy, right? By faith, by faith in God's promises, His Word, by faith, the power and the love of God through Jesus and you're lit. And you might say, well, Pastor Stephen, that's just that, that little thing there, that little application, that's just too easy. Life is a lot more complicated than that. You know what? It is a lot more complicated, and that's why God so loved you that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to do the heavy lifting, to do the complicated stuff, to do the holy stuff that you and I could never do because we're unholy, because we're in darkness. We needed an elder brother, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, to step in on our behalf and do and accomplish for us what we could never do at the cross cross of Calvary. Jesus did the heavy lifting. Never mistake that getting the power from heaven to you was complicated. Oh, it was complicated, but God took care of all those blueprints and all those schematics, and he did what you and I could never do, but now he made it so simple that it really is like flipping a switch and just going, I believe. I surrender all of my other ideas, and I believe and submit to the Creator and His design to get hooked up to Jesus. Isaiah chapter 60, verses 2 and 3. Darkness will cover the earth. Does that sound familiar? Darkness will cover the earth, and deep darkness will cover the peoples. Right now we're living in a season where people feel like they're in deep darkness, like they don't know what's coming next. They're scared. But then it goes on. But the Lord will rise upon you. He's talking to you, my friend. And his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. Why? Because nations will come to your light. God wants to draw all cultures and peoples to himself, but he wants to use you. And kings, leaders, influencers to the brightness of your rise. And God's always wanted sons and daughters filled with his light that would be hope, bring hope to this world. Right now, you're feeling hope just by listening to the truth. But this is you. God wants to light up your design. God made you in his image, the image of light to be a shining light. There is that temporary relief. You can get that temporary high. You know, you can get a little borrowed fake light, have somebody kind of shining it into your glass. You can get a little bit of that fake stuff. Hollywood's got all kinds of fake stuff. Entertainment world's got all kind of fake stuff. Every culture, every man-made thing has all kinds of ways to try to alleviate the pain of being empty of light. Still doesn't change the fact, the truth, that you were designed to be filled with light. Let God's love fill you, empower you, by having faith in His Son, Jesus. Can I just say that again? Let God's love, remember, God is the Father of lights. Let God's love, the Father of lights, let Him fill you and empower you with His love and light by having faith in His Son, Jesus Christ, the work, the finished work He did at the cross, having faith and making that connected. Power. The light comes on. John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He was like saying, I'm the light. John 1 said, he is the light of the world. No one comes to the Father except by and through me. We can't get that power from the Father except by and through him. Let God's love fill you, empower you by having faith in his son, Jesus. Light is on in your life. Now, I know you want to connect with God's love and power source right now. 
You know what? Acts chapter 16, 31 just says this. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. That word saved, you maybe have heard it before, but wondered what's that even mean? It means saved from darkness, saved from being unpowered, from being unlit, from being cast off, from being thrown away and being useless throughout eternity, being lost for eternity. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and His finished work at the cross and you will be saved, you and your household as well, because once you get lit and the light comes up on the inside of you, it becomes contagious to your whole household. As you've been listening to God's Word today, I believe that faith has been rising in your heart. So now, let's activate that faith, just like we do with that connecting to Jesus. Let's activate that faith and pray this simple prayer. Just pray it right after me. Right there in your home. Heavenly Father, I repent of my sin. I take responsibility for the darkness in my heart. Jesus died on the cross, paid the price for me by your mighty power. God, you raised him from the grave. I accept Christ into my heart. Power up my life with your light and love. I'm born again. I belong to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, praise God. You're in the family of God now. 